Need to make it bigger. I did. Well, you didn't hear this. Make sure your audio's up. Don't know how to do that. So as you're coming in, um, you're, it may be helpful to make sure that you're muted um, until it's time to call in different people. So to mute, you're going to go, if you're on the computer, go to the bottom of your screen and you'll see a little microphone and the word mute and you can click on that. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Next. And we're just going to take another couple minutes to let people come in before we get started. So move, mute that. <clears throat> oh, no, click it again. Go back to that thing, which is the Zoom. No, that one right here. Mute right there. Get that. <clears throat> Um, Paul, should we go ahead and get started, you think, as people are coming in? You're on mute. <laughs> Doesn't that seem like the saying of the year for Time magazine? You're muted. <laughs> You're muted. <laughs> You've heard it like a million times. Um, so nice to see everyone. Really wish we were in London Dairy right now. We're, we're like, we're feeling like, um, It'd be so nice to be in the same room, uh, but we're glad that spring is coming. We're optimistic that we're on the downhill side of uh, some of our troubles, that Vermonters are strong, that we're gonna pull together with unity, that we're going to make progress, and that we can come out of uh, this last year better off than ever. And we are really, um, proud to have had the opportunity to work with people in Londonbury as you kind of mark the way by setting new directions. Despite the challenges we've been through, you're lining up to do really great work and it's really inspiring to be part of this process. We've had over 200 people participating one way or and another from Londonbury in framing, list, sharing ideas, voting for priorities last month and gearing up for action. Not all of them wanna be on a committee not all of them are going to be doing the work day to day, but the cool thing is they're behind the process. They contributed, they did their part. And uh, you folks who are here now, this is always a smaller meeting. It's a meeting of those who are ready to step up and drive the work forward to the next level. So congratulations and good on all of you for um, be being um, ready to move the ball. And we're excited by the, the directions you set last most important and most session, um, to to address uh, the village center issues to drive those forward to look at the potential for the development of a community center in Londonderry and then to look at the housing needs and ways to advance housing for folks um, throughout Londonderry in the future really big issues, all super strategic for the future, uh, all issues that we have seen other towns develop between community centers and revitalizing downtowns and, uh, and uh, developing housing for um, different residents. We, we've seen it done and we're excited to see what comes of this process as we go forward. So tonight's a night where we're really about work. We're really about what's the next steps to knock down the beginnings of a work plan for each of these areas, uh, to knock down a bit of connection to resources that could help drive the work or support the work as you move forward. 
And I want to just really quickly introduce the visiting team members who, you know, they've had a long day at work um, wherever they are, but today they also are putting themselves on the line for lunch as well. And I'll just ask them to wave a hand to, to you. But Caitlin Corkins is here from the Vermont Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, Chris Campany, the Executive Director of the Wyndham Regional Commission. <coughs> ben Doyle, the Eric. new Executive Director from Preservation Trust of Vermont. Alyssa Johnson, who's the new Community Project Specialist at VCRD that helps do follow-up with communities to get things done. Jenna Koloski, most of you have met, who's the Community and Policy Manager at VCRD. Nick Kramer, Community and Policy Associate, who does an enormous amount of work for us. Sarah Lang from the Southern Vermont Economy <coughs> Project. She's the manager at the BDCC. Peter Pradji, Director of Housing Development at the Winder, Wyndham and Windsor Housing Trust. John Max Muse from uh, USDA Rural Development. He's the Area Director for Vermont. Gretchen Wittenhouse, the Senior Housing Analyst from the Housing and Conservation Board. Gabrielle Sestari, Business Prosperity and Community Project Specialist from the Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation. Mia Watson, Resource and Communications Coordinator from VHFA. And Sue Vesta, the Senior Planner from the Wyndham Regional Commission. So thank you all for coming. It's great to have you with us um, to, to do the work ahead tonight. And as everyone knows, for us, it's all about local leadership. These folks are here to be resource, <coughs> Um, aids to you. They're not here to make decisions or even give hard advice, but to listen to you, to reflect with you about action steps, and then to help layer in their ideas for resources that can help you be effective in driving these projects forward. So thank you guys for, for coming. Uh, Jenna, I think with that, I'll turn it back to you to review the agenda for tonight, the process and the, the systems to do it right on Zoom. So thank you, Jenna. All right. Well, thanks so much, Paul. And hi, everyone. Thanks for coming out tonight and for your willingness to, to step up and to think about next action steps on these three priorities that you've chosen. Um, I'm going to walk through lots of nuts and bolts right now. So bear with me as we walk through the steps of the agenda tonight. But really quickly, I just want to review where we've been uh, before tonight. So this process started way back in early, I guess it was early February when we brought a steering committee of community leaders together to set, um, to frame the process, to select topics for discussion and to build a plan for outreach to invite the community together. Uh, later that month, we held those series of community forums where we uh, collected brainstormed ideas from the community and also had uh, written input via surveys and online survey input as well. And then ultimately, um, Earlier in March, we got together, um, or later in February, got together, reviewed all those ideas together, and then had a chance to vote on top priorities. And so these three priorities that we're discussing tonight are those ideas that, um, that rose to the top of that list, that the community said, these are the things that we want to focus on today. And so tonight is all about going from those paragraphs that were voted on uh, last month to saying, what are the the concrete action steps that we need to take or start taking today to get to where we want to be. But then also importantly, what are the resources that might be available to us to get that work done? And so that's part of the reason we brought this team tonight to sit with each of these new task forces that are forming and to, to think with you about resources that might be available and perhaps ways that they or their organizations can support the work as well. Um, so let me just pull up the agenda really quick and, and walk through it. And then I'll walk through some of the logistics of how we're going to uh, make this work on Zoom. Uh, one moment, let me just pull that screen share back up. Okay. All right, can you see that okay? Good. All right, so here's the agenda for the evening. We've got a lot packed in. Um, right now, we are at the review of community visit process in tonight's agenda. Really quickly here in a second, we're gonna turn around to looking at that vision statement vote. So you'll remember that last month we reviewed, we brainstormed a list of potential vision, vision points for the future of the community. And tonight we'll, um, we've got a process in place to vote on those that you're gonna wanna include in your final action 
plan and report. So we'll review those and I'll go over that in more detail in a moment. We're then going to break out into task forces um, where Paul Costello, Ben Doyle and myself uh, will facilitate conversations with these groups. Um, one focused on the village center work, one focused on uh, housing, affordable housing and one focused on developing a community center. We'll review major ideas and the kind of current status of each of these areas. We'll brainstorm potential action, action steps, prioritize action steps, and then identify human and financial resources needed to accomplish those steps. Right at 8.15, we're gonna pull those breakout groups back to this main room and we'll have a quick 15 minutes to um, give a, a very brief overview of, of each group and what was discussed. And then we'll go over some next steps um, and conclusions for the evening. Resource team. So, all right. So here's one thing that we want to get out of the way up front, which is going to help us to break out into breakout groups in a little bit. And then I'll get into this vision statement conversation. So when we break out into groups, Nick has got us set up so that there's going to be three groups to, to break into, just like we did if you were here for the forums in the first step. Um, a little window is gonna pop up on your screen that's gonna allow you to say, yes, I'll go into that breakout group. But one thing that would be really helpful to us uh, to help that make that sorting a lot easier is if you set up your Zoom name so that it includes the number of the breakout group that you want to attend. So you'll see a little tutorial here on your screen. Um, you'll see that the breakout groups are numbered. So if you want to talk about affordable housing, we're calling that group number one. If you wanna talk about developing a community center, we're calling that group number two. If you want to talk about revitalizing the village center, we're calling that group number three. And so to name yourself with the number of the group that you wanna attend, if you go to the bottom of your screen and click participants, you'll see a list of participants come up and you can hover over your name and click rename and then you can type a number in front of your name, the number of the group that you want to attend. Or you can just go to your picture on the screen and hover over it and you can either right click or click the three little dots up at the corner um, and hit rename. And then you're able to uh, add a number in front of your name. So if everyone can take a second to do that, um, it would really help us to do the sorting later. So I'm going to do that now in my, I'm going to go to rename and then I'll be facilitating the affordable housing group. So I'm gonna put a one in front of my name. So it's gonna say one, Jenna Kowalski. So that's something as we're kind of going through this vision statement exercise, it would be great to have people do. If that didn't make any sense and you're totally lost, stay where you are. And Alyssa Johnson on our team is gonna remain in this main room and she can help to put you in the breakout group that you wanna go to. So you can let her know, especially if you're on the phone um, probably best to, to stick around in that group and she can put you into a breakout group as well. So that's a logistical piece for the evening. Let me just stop my share for one second. All right, I'm seeing all kinds of numbers in front of names. So thank you for those of you that are doing that. And again, if you need any help, um, let us know or, or stay in the room and Lisa will sort you to where we wanna go. Um, okay, so the next thing that we wanna cover uh, this evening um, is the vision statement vote. So you'll remember that last month we asked folks to brainstorm a list of vision points for the future of the town. So when um, we asked people to think about if you picture your community, picture Londonderry in 10, 20, 30, 50 years, once all of this work has been accomplished that you wanna do, once you've built affordable housing and redesigned your village center, what is the vision that you wanna see for your community? And people shared some excellent vision points and we developed a list. What we're gonna do right now is read through those together. And then we've got a link, just like we did last time when we shared the link to go and vote, we'll share a link to a survey where you can vote on the vision points that you would like to be included. The vision points that you see as, that you would agree should be included in a list of vision points for the future of the town. So any points that you think should be included, you would mark, yes. And any points that you feel like, no, that doesn't really align with my vision for the community, you would leave that one blank. Um, and so uh, 
where this will live essentially is when we get the final report and action plan back to you, this would be listed at the front of the report. So it's not an official town document or anything like that. It's just saying like, here's some vision points to help frame this work that we're gonna take on together. Um, so it would be great, just like we did last month when we read through the action ideas, if I could have some community readers to help read through this list of vision points that we developed. Um, if folks could just raise a hand if you're willing to read one, then I'll pull up the PowerPoint on our shared screen. Um, and it would be helpful if you use the raised hand function. Jane, I've got your hand up first. So I'm gonna start with you in a second. But if you could use the raised hand function in Zoom, if you're on the phone, you can use star nine, right, to do that. Team, thank you, star nine to raise your hand. Um, and if you, uh, are in the Zoom kind of platform on your screen, you can go to participants and uh, you and raise your hand or reactions and there's a raised hand in there. And I'll see that come up on the participants list. Um, so let me pull that. Uh, actually, Alyssa, can you share the PowerPoint because so I can better see um, any raised hands. <clears throat> okay, that's much better. Thank you. All right, so Jane, do you want to kick us off? So if you unmute um, and then uh, Alyssa, just start with the next one. All right, go ahead, Jane, with this first one. Londonderry residents look to a future for the community where Londonderry has enough housing for everyone who wants to live here. Great, thank you. And Cynthia? London Dairy has jobs with good wages for residents that want to work in town. Thanks. Larry? London Dairy is affordable to anyone who wants to live here. Excellent. Uh, Gail? London Dairy is well integrated with the surrounding natural environment and natural resources. Thank you. Uh, Sharon? Sharon, you're on mute. Oh, Emily. London Dairy has a distinct village center that attracts young people and businesses. Thank you. Emmett? London Dairy modernizes and thrives into the future while keeping its rural village character. Thanks, Emmett. Helena. Londonderry celebrates oh, and preserves. Oh, you try can't again. No, we can. You're good. Yeah. Londonderry celebrates and preserves its historic structures and is open to new innovative structures. Paul, you have to raise Great. yourself. Thank you. Switch our names. Um, let's see. Elsie. London Dairy is energy independent, food secure, and walkable. Wonderful. Thanks, Elsie. Does someone else want to volunteer to read one? Ben. London Dairy is part of a Tri Mountain public transportation network. Thank you. And someone else on the next one? You don't have to agree with it to read it. We just want to get them out loud. <laughs> Gail. London Dairy is especially accommodating to folks at both ends of life, seniors like me and children. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gail. Emmett? London Dairy as ubiquitous, affordable, accessible broadband that facilitates community connection. Thanks, Larry. I have a little pop-up in front of the type. London Dairy has oh. public indoor spaces for winter recreation. All right, Helena again. 
Londonderry has a thriving and vibrant community center. Thanks, Sharon. Londonderry is a safe, healthy, and connected community. All right, do we have another or is that, oh, that's it. Thank you, Faith, I think we, we've covered them. Um, okay, let's pull this down, Alyssa. Great, thank you. All right, so um, before we go into these breakouts, we do wanna do a quick vote on these, this, um, on these vision ideas. So we're gonna give you a couple minutes um, this is going to be similar to what we did last time if you were here. If not, I'll walk you through it. So Alyssa is going to plug a link into the chat window in Zoom where you're going to find um, that survey for voting. And it's a very simple kind of, uh, it's unlike last time, it's a, it's a survey format you'll be probably more familiar with. It's basically a list of these points and you'll just want to read through them really quick and check off, like I said, the ones that you feel like, okay, this fits in. If I had a list of vision points for my town, this fits in with that. But if you see one that you say, uh, this doesn't really align with my vision, you'll want it, you can leave that one blank. So um, you're not kind of ranking or choosing only a couple, you're choosing all the ones that you feel comfortable leaving in and leaving out the ones that you don't feel should be included in the list. Does that make sense to everyone? Generally nodding heads. Okay, good. Um, so why don't you go ahead and plug that link into the chat? Um, for folks that uh, there, I think we do have someone on the phone. If you do have internet access, um, the link is on the One London Dairy website. So it's a bit.ly slash One London Dairy. Um, and you can find the link there. But for those of you that can, if you go to the bottom of your screen and hit chat, you'll see the link come up on your chat and you can click on that to go and vote. Um, it, you will leave Zoom to do that, but your Zoom will stay open and you'll be able to go through and make selections that way. Um, if you're on a tablet or phone, I believe if you touch the screen and then click the three little dots that are on the bottom, you'll see a menu of options come up and chat is one of those options. And again, you can, you can click on the link there um, from your chat to go in and take the survey. Also, we know that people that aren't in the meeting tonight may have opinions on this. And so we are gonna share this to our full email list of, of 200 or so. Um, and so everyone will have a chance to weigh in. And if you don't get a chance right now to do it, you'll have a chance tomorrow in your email. Um, and also please share this with, with others. Um, when you see that link, if, if there are other folks in town that haven't been plugged in or that you think will want to weigh in on these vision points, please feel free to, to share this with other people. Does any, is anybody having trouble accessing that survey? Just let me know and we're happy to help. Wish we had some music or something to play while people are, are voting. <laughs> Maybe Nick or Alyssa or Paul could sing or. I don't think you want that, Jenna. No, no. <laughs> so but we'll just give. We'll just give another survey. We'll give another minute or two to finish these up. And so Alyssa, it sounds like we're, we're pretty set up with breakouts or Nick, I mean. Good. Thanks yeah, everyone. We're pretty set up. We had a, a couple folks who joined in the last minute or so who missed okay. the read. Okay, I'll do but, another uh, quick run through of how to. All right, so I, I think I, I'm going to do a little bit more describing as folks are, are finishing up with the survey, but um, in a moment here, we're going to break out into these three task force groups. Um, for those of you that have joined, uh, you may notice that everyone has a number in front of their name. Uh, those numbers are helping to tell us which group people want to participate in. So the people with one in front of their name are requesting to go to the housing group. The people with two are requesting to go to the community center group and the people with a three in front of their name are requesting to go to the revitalizing the village center group. Um, if you need help finding your way, just stay here when the breakouts open and Alyssa can help send you to where you need to go. 
So in a moment, when we do these breakouts, you'll see a little pop-up mm -hmm. come up in your screen. It's gonna ask you to join the breakout that you've been assigned to. So please say yes on that screen to get sent into the, into the right place. Um, thank you for providing input on that survey. Again, we'll send that out tomorrow to get some final answers on that. Um, but let me just say, it, before we, we break out into these groups, um, I do want to mention that we're really excited to have a really an exciting leadership, leadership structure in place to help move these groups forward. Um, at the end of this process, we continue to work with the community and, and support your efforts in an ongoing way, but we do rely on people locally to step up into chairing and leadership roles in order to help guide these, each of these um, task forces forward. And so we're really excited that all three of the task forces have chairs that are willing to step up into that role. Um, and so in the housing group, Patty Eisenhower is gonna be chairing that group. Um, the community center group, we have um, Elizabeth LeBeau willing to, to chair uh, that initiative. And then, um, the village center group, you know, in the Project Londonderry structure, there was already a Main Street working group that Larry Gubb was um, helping to chair and felt like rather than starting up a, a new group, um, it really makes sense to merge those initiatives and to continue to work together. And so Larry's gonna continue to chair that and he'll uh, kick off the, that breakout sharing a little bit of what they've been up to, but is excited to take on new energy and new leadership in that initiative. We are also working on, um, potential prospects to chair the overall initiative so that walking so at the end of the structure, we will have a leadership structure. We have an overall chair, chairs of each of the task forces and also the Project Londonderry existing task forces that are all gonna be working together um, to, to move all of this forward separately from the town and independent of the town, but working in close partnership with the Planning Commission and the municipality. So um, we're looking forward to, to working with that group. Um, oh, are we ready? Ready to break out into our groups? Um, okay, so uh, I think in a moment here, Nick, are you ready to go? So we're gonna go into our breakout groups and then walk through um, the- I'm ready, yeah. Beginning. Ready? All right. We'll see you in the breakouts okay. in a moment. Thanks. And then again, anyone who's still here, don't panic. I'll help sort you in a moment, including the person on the phone, I see you. Nick, you're good, go ahead. but it's a very important one and, and encompasses a great deal of different pieces that uh, hopefully when we pull together, we'll, we'll have a, um, a great product at the end. Um, <clears throat> the Project Lemondary Main Street Working Group has been working on all kinds of things. Uh, a lot of it has been, at this point, information gathering, uh, and I trying to identify specific things that uh, are similar to this process where people were looking at the, specifically the North Village, but we want to include both villages. But um, to begin with, we started out with looking at the North Village and looking at where things were necessarily not working well and trying to come up with solutions for how we might be able to make them work better, but also identifying how a lot of things are interconnected in terms of how one thing may affect another in terms of uh, economic development, in terms of pedestrian safety or pedestrian bike safety, uh, just connectivity, um, uh, traffic calming, those sorts of things. So uh, we've identified all kinds of things. Um, and we have actually quite a list uh, put together uh, already of things that we've identified, but that's uh, not something that it needs to be limited to. There's a lot of other things. And as we go along, we probably need to also uh, maybe limited to just a few things to begin with and then work on some other things uh, later on. But there's some things that we identified that might be able to, to be done in a very short term, other things that may be uh, in the distant future or not in the distant future, but further on down the line. 
the uh, <clears throat> planning commission applied for a municipal planning grant specifically to do a master plan study for the North Village. Um, we got the grant and we are in the process of putting out an RFP for consultants, planners to do, to engage in the master planning process. Um, that's going to be very important as we kind of this group and Project London Dairy, what's, what Project London Dairy brings to this group um, going forward as far as developing a program for them to then develop a master plan. So it's all integrated and we're trying to get um, planners on board as, as quickly as possible so they can become part of the process. And um, I look forward to hearing from all kinds of ideas and everyone's input as to what they believe is important and see where we match up with what Project London Dairy has done so far and uh, see where we've, we add to that and see where we might, you know, um, possibly be in conflict, I don't know, but get opinions from everybody and all points of view as we move forward. Thanks so much, Larry. Can, can you just tell us the master planning process that you're looking at? Is that for transportation, sidewalks, uh, things like that? Or is it actually for the for development in the village center? Well, it's uh, we're the RFP is uh, essentially to create a master plan that that takes a lot of factors into consideration development, but as a part of that, uh, transportation would probably be a very important part. Mm -hmm. And as we go forward tonight and getting everyone's ideas, we might we might realize that 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 you know starts to rise to the top as a very important thing because a lot of things are are attached to that or in, interconnected to that. Um, you know, traffic safety or pedestrian safety also a walkable village, which is connected in some ways to things like affordable housing development. Yeah. Um, not necessarily totally attached to it, but it is important when developers are looking for places to, um, to invest in affordable housing. They like to have it where people who live in affordable housing can walk to uh, businesses and services. Great. Okay, I, I want to just do a quick run around for people to be able to introduce themselves and um, I want to model that as very, very short. So I'll start, Paul, and it might be good if you like sort of told where you lived, like what road you lived on or something so that people get a picture of, um, of, of where you're located in the community. I, I'm Paul Costello, I live in Montpelier on Bailey Avenue. Gail, I know you have something else to say because you got your hand raised, but let's start with you and we'll come back to you to be able to share your perspective. That's fine. Yeah. So I'm Gail Mann. I live on Land Grove Road in Londonderry. Th thanks. Eric Mingo. The little space button wasn't working for my unmute. Um, I'm Eric Mingarance. I live on Green Mountain Trail. Great. I just see a number three with a, a nice woman. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, Mary Lines, Mimi Lines. Um, uh, I live on um, uh, Parsons Lane in, and I'm on the um, Main Street, Project London Dairy. Terrific. Uh, Jane Hewson. Yeah, I live on uh, Under the Mountain Road um, and I'm not doing anything yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, Larry, we've met you. John Tumler. Uh, on Beach Road on Magic uh, Mountain. Great. In Delaware. And part and part time in Delaware, so back and forth between the two. Great, but you got up here for the winter, huh? Uh, you know, two or three weeks now. Back for a week or two. Good for you, uh, Caitlin. Hi everyone, Caitlin Corkins. I live on Orange Street in Barry, Vermont. Susan Westa. Hi, uh, yes, I'm with the Wyndham Regional Commission and I live on Green Hill Parkway in Brattleboro. 
Marlene? I'm Marlene Boyaner. I live on Spruce Hill off of Riley Road. And uh, I'm just about to sign up for this group. Oh, great. Shane? Shane O'Keefe. I'm the town administrator. I live on Whipple Hill Road in Walpole, New Hampshire. Oh, great to have you with us. Sharon? Sharon Crossman. Um, I'm sort of a neighbor of yours, John. I live on Mansfield Lane across Route 11 from Magic Mountain. Great. Alyssa? Hi, everyone. I'm Alyssa, and I live on Main Street in Waterbury, and I'm also hopping off to go help some folks in the breakout room. So if I'm in and out, that's why. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Sarah Lang? Hey everyone, Sarah Lang. I'm with the Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation and I am on Oak Grove in Brattleboro. Andrew. Hi, <clears throat> Andy Rack here. I live on Middletown Road, London Dairy. Hi folks, how are you? Sorry, uh, we're, in breakout, we're in breakout room. So we go, oh no, they're stranded. Um, yeah. Freeman and I live on Cody Road just over the line in Lane Grove. Susan. Um, hi, I'm Susan Collins, and I live, um, actually Ben's next door neighbor, um, and I live on Old County Road in Langrove. Terrific. Peter? Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Peter Caradonna. Uh, my family has a house up in Peru on Glen Road, and uh, I'm talking to you right now from Sunnyside Gardens in Queens. <laughs> Great to have you with us. Your longest traveled tonight. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Faith Alberti. Faith. Uh, hi, I'm Faith Alberti. I live on Windy Rise Lane West in South Londonderry. Terrific. Melzer. Uh, Jasmine and Roger Melzer, we have a home on Magic Circle and we're currently tuning in from Park Slope in Brooklyn. Well, great to have you with us. Uh, Greeno? Greeno? We can't hear you if you're talking. Maybe we'll come back to you. Um, there's someone on the phone on 860-805-7029. Yeah, hi, it's Mark Frame, uh, living um, a lot of times on Landgrove Road, presently in Olympia, Washington. Well, you're <laughs> furthest traveled, then I guess you win. Um, <laughs> did, has everyone introduced themselves? I think Taylor Prouty maybe hasn't. Taylor did. Taylor did, and Bonnie yes. Johnson did. I'm Guarino Savio. I live on the Langer Road in London Derry. Great, great to have you with us, Guarino. Yes, and Bonnie Johnson's with Dwight. We're on board. Okay, great. Well, what a great team. 30 people on this call working on re revitalization of the village centers. So we heard from Larry, there's a master planning process that's going forward that We'll do a study of the North Village and probably have some systematic ideas on um, some potentially significant long-term changes that might happen there. Let's think in the way that we were when we opened the conversation around some things being long-term sort of master changes to the villages and some things maybe being shorter term. Like we always say, you know, if you want to do a a town downtown redevelopment project. You might want to, um, you might want to deal with some derelict buildings, and you might want to deal with changing some streetscapes. But you might first start by having some flower boxes by the bridge, so that people actually see change and see that there's a movement moving forward. And one thing builds momentum to the next. So I'm wondering if people have ideas that you would like to share as sort of starting points that might be ideas towards action that this group could lead forward. And I'm gonna ask you to use the, to, to, if you can go down to the, the 
reactions dot at the bottom of your page where you have the choice of raising your hand there. Um, and there may be another, maybe other ways to raise your hand for those who are sophisticated around this stuff, but that's an easy one. And I'm gonna ask Gail to start. What, what's your idea, Gail? Well, actually, I was going to add on to what Larry was saying, because I've been editing the RFP. Um, there's much more to this RFP. It's really going to look at a lot of the issues, whether it be environmental, whether it be socioeconomic, all the issues that we have currently in our downtown village area. And on top of that, there are a number of properties that are about to go up for sale. And there's one that is for sale. Well, there's probably a good number that need to be addressed because we want to ensure that whatever happens to these properties is in this master plan. And in addition to that, the connections that you were, you know, we talked about in um, the vision, all right, creating the ability to connect the village and be able to walk it, which is something I'm sure people will talk about. That's the main part of it. also. But I think most of all, when we looked at Getting this master plan, it was for investors. We need to have investment in our community to purchase these properties to help us develop them in the way we want to see them developed. Great. Thank you for that addition to the summary. Um, that, that gives a, a sense of the, the richness of what you may have um, in terms of some findings that would inform this group, the Planning Commission, and ultimately the town. Um, Larry, you have something you want to add? Yeah, I just would like to add to what I said earlier in that um, one of the things that we were looking at was uh, actually looking at the historical photos of the town of Londonderry. And it, it just as a guide um, and to see, there was a period when the, the town had a lot more structures. Uh, it also had sidewalks, the bridges had actually a walkway that was separate from the roadway. Um, and our thought is not so, uh, to, in order to keep the character of the building, we're looking at, at some of that history, but also we want to do it in a modern sense based on things like climate change and the possibility of additional flooding, that sort of thing. Um, and include uh, things like water and wastewater where we can. Boy, that is comprehensive. That's exciting. So there's going to be some really big picture look at everything from transportation corridors, housing, some of the buildings that are coming up for sale, basic infrastructure of wastewater, um, which so this could have enormous significance for the long term development of the, the village center. I'm going to go to, to Jane Fusen next and hoping that Jane has something that she would recommend to the group as an action step. Yeah, I, this qualifies more as um, a long term action step, but I think probably there are aspects of it that could be thought about uh, in terms of low hanging fruit. Yeah. But it has occurred to me, I've lived in London Dairy now for seven years and we keep Barring issues of the hundred year floods and all of that, we keep our asset of the river uh, hidden uh, in our towns. And it, it, I can't imagine that it wouldn't be a wonderful attraction to switch walking on the road to walking along the river uh, in whatever safe and environmentally intelligent way one would do that. So uh, I'm really interested in thinking about shifting the focus away from the streets and, and onto a huge um, and beautiful asset that we have, uh, albeit probably needing some Army Corps of Engineering help uh, to make it viable. But I think um, that's something I hope we look at and think about as um, changing the aspect of the village, I guess is the best way to summarize that. That's the North Village. I live in the South Village, but yeah. that's a whole nother ball game. Yeah. We've seen towns do a lot around this. You know, Manchester um, opened up the river walk in that area, and St. Johnsbury has done a lot to reclaim the river. Are there any short-term action steps? Assuming that probably that's going to be part of a master planning discussion, are there things that 
you know, in St. Johnsbury, where they had this conversation, they said, and maybe we should have a public event along the river, like a picnic on, on the river. Maybe we should have a band on the river this summer to get people thinking about this in a different way. And maybe even put some signage up or, a, you know, open a boat launch or, you know, something that would make it um, feel more friendly and more, more like public space. And I don't know if there are ideas like that in town, but. Um, you know, we could do more public picnic areas um, where we don't have parking lots. I mean, we have an awful lot of parking lots <laughs> um, and not much beautification along the river, but there are, pl there are places. Okay. All right, let's um, go to number three. I don't know your name, but. <laughs> I don't know why my name isn't there, but anyway, I'm, I'm Mimi Lines. I'm on the Planning Commission and Project Londonderry. Um, one of the things that um, Main Street in Londonderry has to think about is that we're, we are in a floodplain. Um, we, uh, so that's one point. Um, the, uh, we have thought of a lot about a river walk, which might have an amphitheater, fire pits, um, designation of some of the mill sites. It could be a, an attraction not only for um, tourism, but for um, the elderly and, and disabled people, because it would be a place they could go and walk. Um, the, uh, the whole idea of sidewalks, I think, is a, um, a difficult point to get across to local people because they see it as urbanization as opposed to safety. So I think that's uh, something that should be talked about, uh, that sidewalks. Um, and um, sidewalks give connectivity within the town. I think that's very important. Um, and, um, oh, the, uh, the dam, we should talk about whether the, the dam in Londonderry should be um, uh, renovated or whether we should eliminate the dam and let the, the natural flow of the river. Um, so because of being in a floodplain, that's sort of a, a controversial um, thought. And, um, and I think somehow we should get back to connectivity with South Londonderry because after all that is in our town, there is a project afoot with um, the town hall in South Londonderry next to Solo with, that would um, bring people together. Terrific. Well, there's a lot in there. Um, it sounds like you're echoing the idea of developing a river walk, the idea of looking at that sidewalk plan, probably that will be part of a master planning process and then evaluating the renovation or redevelopment of that dam and the connecting points between the North and South Village. So th thanks so much for sharing that. Um, I want to ask folks who've, uh, um, who've just spoken like Susan and Mimi to lower your hands. Um, and I think Larry's waiting again, but I'm gonna go to Heather to have you share your idea. And when you think of what we're trying to do now, we're trying to not talk about all the things we should study um, in the future, though we may, we may wanna add to that master planning concept, but what are some of the things that this group of people could do over the next year as well? So uh, Susan, do you wanna go share a perspective? I was just going to share an example from a town that I used to live in, where um, we never, it was a town that never had a town center or a town green and folks really wanted one. And they plan, we were planning for a new town center, but that took a lot of time and effort. And so in order to um, bring people's attention to it and, and gain support and interest in the project, they made a pop-up town green really simply with just a little fence and some fake astroturf to start and they had a little festival around it and every year it grew and grew and you know now they have a downtown with a real town green um, that they didn't previously have but it was just a great way to get the community engaged and get their support for the effort. 
Great. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I'm going to go to Sharon and then Gary and then Ben. What's your idea, Sharon? Well, actually, it wasn't my idea. Um, I was talking with a local resident early on in our process and asking her what she thought would be great to um, include in our future plans for Londonderry Village. And she said her parents um, used to, because they lived in the village when she was growing up, um, they used to walk down to the riverside on the, um, let's see, the east end of the bridge on Route 11. And there were a couple benches there where they could sit, um, digest their dinner and have a chat and then wander back home again. And she really missed that. And she thought if we had a couple of benches there in that narrow little spit between the commercial truck route and the river, um, that it would be really nice to restore that. It sounds like a little pocket park, Sharon. Like in Montpelier, we have a couple little pocket parks. They're, they're hardly bigger than a postage stamp, but it's a place people could gather. What, what's the, is there a name for that site? What would you call it? Next I would call it the Mill Pond. Cool. So there's something that sounds to me like a short-term thing that people could do and that would kind of show some momentum in that village center now. Um, Gary. Yes, and we have we have a lot of um, benches around in the um, town parks that are stone, that are a nice model if that could be replicated, but it wouldn't have to be, it could be very simple. It might be cool to have the same kind of theme. Yeah. Uh, Gary, what's your idea? Yeah, so again, sort of building on uh, prior comments about a river walk and reflecting on two places where I've lived before. Uh, Boulder, Colorado has an amazing uh, Boulder Creek path, which has, it really does bring a lot of people out to the rivers at, at various parts of the river um, and has exercise stations and kids fishing piers. So I think there's a lot that could be done, but I agree that's long-term. Your request was about what can we do short-term and I uh, recently lived in Concord, Massachusetts, where they have every year a river fest. And it seems to me that responding to your comment, what could we do this year? That would be sort of a short-term thing, having a river fest that just sort of celebrates the river. And it could be involved lots of different things. There are canoe or paddle uh, events that go on. There are picnic uh, stations, you know, so the, the festival that happens over a weekend can help revitalize and uh, invigorate, you know, local food establishments because they participate and you have, you know, a, a food festival, but the, the theme is the river. And so everything ties in somehow to the river and, you know, can be a fundraiser for these park benches that Sharon just mentioned or uh, a planning uh, um, opportunity for a longer term goal. Yeah, just imagine August on the river with the community out there without masks. <laughs> and people enjoying the sun and what a fun thing that would be. Thanks, Gary. Ben Freeman and then Susan. Hey, Ben. The agreement of the owners of that land in order to build a, a walk. So, I mean, so it's, it's, it's gaining the buy-in from those property owners that we really need to get. Um, and, and then that kind of leads me into all the things that we would love to do on Main Street, but, but um, you know, in thinking about the properties that are on the market at the moment or coming, you know, possibly coming onto the market, um, there's the mill property that, that is um, for sale, which would be an amazing community center. Um, we like wouldn't it be great to have a snowboard museum there anyway these are longer term wish lists but uh i think you know for me this like we really need to think along with the the master plan about how can we do something with the buildings that we have and revitalize them yes so the master plan has to include that revitalization thing and maybe we'll hear from the community center 
uh, discussion, something more about that building or, or others probably. Um, I want to go to Peter Car Caradona, who's been waiting, and then Meltzer, and then I'll come back up to Eric. Peter. Um, thank, thanks, Paul. Um, you know, what I'm hearing here is that everybody is talking about one specific things, and there's something Jane mentioned in the last meeting, which was that really this is a drawing problem. This is a problem that we really need to work out on paper, and we have all these different things going on. Um, what uh, I also like what Susan had to say about buy-in. And the way you get buy-in is to get people involved and to get not only us as leaders or as in interested volunteers, but also um, the building owners, the property owners. And so I was thinking more along the lines of community visioning, um, possibly uh, during the summer, having a setting up a full, let's say full weekend of design, drawing, people putting ideas on paper and getting these ideas down because then these master planners, whoever the town ultimately does hire, will take our ideas because they don't live in Londonderry. Um, they, they're not here, they're gonna be from somewhere else. And this way we take, they take our ideas back to the table and we have the buy-in. We also have the building owner buy-in. And ultimately, we come up with a good plan. That's great. Um, great, Peter. I think probably most good designers are going to want to do something like that with the community, too. So I, let, let's put that in the list of um, kind of a middle term or even near-term sort of practice. Um, Meltzer. So going back to what Susan was saying about the river and uh, much of the property being private, it goes back to what I've been saying in the last two meetings about information and not knowing what's there or where you're allowed to go or where I can go without breaking, you know, an ankle. I don't even know if you can like walk around the cemetery. I've no idea what's up there. So in the short term, it would just be nice to know what is public and where is it safe and where could you have a nice summertime stroll? Okay. Okay, so let's let's consider that a short-term thing that could be evaluated. That's certainly gonna be part of the long-term conversation around master planning too, but it's something that could get started. Eric. Uh, yeah, just nothing radically different here, just connecting some of the dots. Pop-up is great. I uh, spent a lot of time in Portland, Oregon, where uh, it's all about food trucks popping up everywhere. And it's a great way to get things started. It's like food truck, we're not committing to anything. Uh, I lived down in Long Beach, um, New York for a while. Ironically, now I live next to Stu from Long Beach, New York as well. <laughs> um, so uh, one of the things that we were suggesting down there is like, hey, why don't you just try it? People were like, no, 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 no. And it's saying the idea of like, hey, we have to get buy-in from all these places. It seems that like on a weekend, if we could just convince from the the mill down to the garden uh, market and uh, deli or whatever that combination of garden market area thing is called, just to open up theirs to say, hey, that's open for when, wouldn't you like all that crowd <laughs> that's going to the, the farmer's market that have already parked and they're kind of like, what, where else can we go to that point of, can we walk along this river and just have like the maple leaf or Stoddard's or just put like, hey, why don't you put some park benches out here and like serve people out here and why don't you sell to them out here and why don't you have your business? As the community and policy manager, the pair discussed how the One London Dairy Initiative- Hi Kelly, how are you? Things happen at this point. So they- You know, it's it's wonderful. Yeah. Um, lots, of good, lots of good examples. But um, another thing I was thinking of was, and Sue might be able to help us with this, is, is crosswalks and, if, and things that we can do initially without having a master plan in place to, to kind of calm traffic a little bit. Even um, if they're not permanent, you could test them, right? Right, right. Speed limit signs like the, you know, the radar ones, uh, just to remind people that, uh, you know, what the speed limit is and that we are a town, which is, I think, a part of creating an identifiable village area. Yeah. Yep. Okay, terrific. Uh, 
Sharon, then Heather, then Chris. Or did you already speak, Sharon? Are you, you done? You're muted. Um, so this will be shorter because I was going to speak to what Larry spoke to. Um, we can't do anything about being um, a commercial truck route um, along our main street, but we could maybe appeal to the um, to VTrans for some safe crossings that are marked so people can get from one one you know, town park to another parking space and back and forth to the farmer's market safely. Um, that was one of my points. And then the other one I just wanted to offer is um, as a short term um, thing is to um, take Eric's idea and um, <laughs> make a contest out of um, trying to convince the landowners along the riverbank to um, take on uh, to open up their backs, back doors to a pathway and um, reward someone for um, being able to convince them to do it. So that's sort of in jest, but maybe not. Well, they may make money doing it. Well, we know they would make money if they would just do it. <laughs> yeah. Someone to get them to do it without coercion. Yeah, so a contest. Um, Heather, and then Gail. Hi. Um, well, I'm really excited to support the short-term vision and commitment. I'm wondering if at the same time, some um, action steps towards something long-term could happen. I'm wondering if the town of London Dairy has an access management plan. I know that safety personally is an issue. Um, it's hard for walking, for biking. Um, and a lot of the comments keep circling back to these crosswalks and walking from place to place. Um, I think Route 11 is a state highway, right? Um, the state loves <laughs> um, pedestrian and bicycle studies. Like, I don't know, can, can two of these things happen simultaneously and an immediate focus on the safety rather than the urbanization? Um, and again, these are just like questions and sort of just comments. Thanks, Heather. That's a good, they're good points. Let's check with Larry. Does, Larry, do you believe that the planning study, the master plan will cover like bike lanes and um, public safety walkability? Absolutely. I think awesome. that's going to be a very uh, high priority because, um, yes. you know, it's, it is, I think, basically safety. I mean, Londonderry, I mean, even if you go to some of the ghost towns or and old mining towns, they had boardwalks, which kept people out of the mud and out of the way of, uh, of wagons and that sort of stuff. So if you look at a lot of the historical pictures of Londonderry, we, yeah. we did have sidewalks that ran through the town and along, you know, there were separate sidewalks on the bridges. Uh, so you could be out of the way of traffic now especially in wintertime, it's, it's very dangerous. You take your life in your hand to go from one end of the village to the other. Well, the that's North Village, river, yeah. Yeah, that's why a river walk would be great, but you know, not everyone owns a car. Uh, not everyone can drive, even if, if uh, you know, they, the, the accessibility is a very, very important thing, I believe. Yeah, okay. Thanks so much, Gail. Yeah, this probably builds on a couple of things. First of all, anything we can do to convince the private property owners along the river. I've talked to them. I've been, you know, carrying this banner. Uh -huh. So we are for it and we'll do whatever it takes to do that. But the other side, you know, in terms of um, the, what we could do immediately, and I think that was Heather who was talking before. Um, I think it, I can't remember the name of the town. Um, created blue lanes, I guess a couple of towns have. So blue lanes are created along the, you know, the road and it allows for walking and for bikes and it's protected with, you know, little, uh, what do you call those cones and things like that. And then I was thinking the other thing that was interesting they did in Manchester this year because of COVID, they had to move, the restaurants had to move outside. So like the pizza parlor <laughs> moved their tables to the sidewalk and then they created a walking lane in the road. So there are creative ways to begin to build pathways. 
Uh, it's still on the street side for now, but at least it would give us some walkability. Great, thank you for that, yeah. Chris. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, I'm just gonna make a bit of a pitch for uh, South Londonderry as well, um, which obviously there's not, it's mostly residential down here, but um, the corner at the bridge, I think has some pretty easy potential. I know there's actually, there would be buy-in from the, the one shop, we, you know, from the corner market that we have here in town for doing things. There's some issues with some, uh, some property, but, uh, but it's uh, crosswalk issues are a little easier because you can walk across, you, you can sort of get around the corner on, uh, on town roads. You don't have to cross route 100 um, to get, even if you want to walk across the bridge during the summer, the bridge does have, it's not a great sidewalk, but there's a sidewalk on the bridge across South London area. Um, so I think there's potential for uh, a little bit of development. There's a park already there on the corner, on the, uh, uh, north side of the bridge on the right hand side if you're going south which most people don't even know is a park but there is a little uh, um, the parks department does have a park there um, I don't think there's any seating or anything like that at the park but um, and the uh, the the village or the corner market there does do you know they uh, they do sandwiches and things like that and it does they're pretty busy particularly and in the summer particularly that would be a spot so I'll just make my pitch for South London area as well great thank you Chris so let me just do a little bit of rehashing of where we are and maybe how we digest this. It would be useful if people could share priorities on this stuff. And normally I'd be standing in front of you, we'd be in a little huddle, right? And I'd have a big sheet of newsprint. I'm not sophisticated though. I'm not particularly sophisticated on doing this on the digital media. So I, I wonder, one, one thing that I notice is that people are putting their thoughts in chats and to put a chat and you just click on that chat, it opens a window and you can write to, to everyone. And it might be a wise thing, because here's what I'm thinking in terms of how to digest what everyone's saying. Normally I'd have it all up on newsprint and people, we'd walk through them and people would be able to point together at the thing that they thought was most important as a priority and maybe most doable and maybe one of the first things that this team of people could start with. You know, one of the things you want to do is use some of your muscles, like painting a, a mural on a wall together or doing something practical is a great way of binding and, and building that sort of momentum and engagement that the community will feel and will feel progress around. And a couple of the, you know, a number of these could be that. But if people would use the chat as we're going through this next review to say the thing that you think would be a core priority. What I can do is digest all this, type it up, turn it into a, a, a better looking uh, structural platform of work and share that with Larry tomorrow. So Larry and I can go over it and review what you've said as priorities and begin to rank, you know, put these in a little bit of an order that will set it up so that when Larry's chairing your next meeting, he'll have a bit of an agenda based on the ideas that kind of rose to the top for people. And we have heard some of these ideas several times already. So it's almost like you're voting by saying them over. But let me read, let me read off some of what I've heard is some of the key ideas for short and long term. And for the long term, everybody knows there's a municipal planning grant. That, that's got the potential to develop a master plan for the North Village, that, that master plan is going to look at everything from safety to, to the way people get around in the thing, to places for crosswalks, to potential buildings, and what could be done for redevelopment to, or towards opening to the river. So there's going to be a lot of big picture directions that are probably going to take leadership from the municipality, some of them, to drive forward. There may be other things that, um, that don't require that, but um, that will big, build a, a very big picture and sort of systems look at all these issues. Uh, within that, there's a concept for this long-term um, opening up of the river, that the river is hidden, that you could be switching from walking along the road to walking along the river and develop a river walk, ask businesses to open the back doors, work with landowners to open up lands and, and pathways through. Um, and towns do this stuff. 
uh, that within the master plan, there could be expanded sidewalks potentially, or certainly blue lanes for walking and biking, which are done in many communities. Um, that there's the opp opportunity to uh, evaluate the in renovation and redevelopment of, uh, what's that word? Um, I'm not sure. Could it be the mill? Could it be the mill? Yeah, probably. Yeah, we all want the we all want the mill redeveloped. Yeah. We all want the mill to be beautiful again. That's what we yes. want. Yeah. Okay, so the, the, there's a, a number of those big picture, longer term directions, and then there are some that were more sh short term and more granular that could be approached maybe pretty directly. Um, some of those may be developing a couple of sidewalks or crosswalks, um, and looking at you know, connecting to VTrans to, to working with the municipality to open up a good, a couple of good safe places to cross now. Um, that in the, the short term, as you look towards the river, you could be looking towards potentially putting some benches down um, by the river or even a, a few picnic tables in a particular place that you could pop open as a, um, a riverfront um, area that would start to gather people's thinking towards that. With that, you could um, potentially have a pop-up green in celebration or a pop-up event on the riverfront in um, some space that where there's permission to do it that would celebrate and highlight that as a direction for people. And even a big pop-up that would look at um, some of the, the backyard commerce and parts of the village that could be closed to traffic and um, the focus of a community-wide celebration late this summer, um, that there could be, um, this could feature local foods, it could feature music, it could feature um, canoeing, the whole nine yards of, of looking at and connecting to the river. Another idea is looking at what could be done to make London Dairy sort of a biking uh, a, a mar have markers that say this is a central place for biking and that this is a place that um, bikers come and we want to welcome them and recognize them. We want them to get off their bikes and spend money downtown and so forth. So that you'd have a kiosk potentially um, with routes for riding in the region um, and descriptions of those routes and bike racks and signage just to put on the map and put, put Londonderry on the map as a place to stop and a place that you could gear up from if you're going on a cool ride from Vermont. Um, the other idea, one other idea is around um, the possibility of developing a visioning session that would engage the public in looking at the future of the North Village as part of the, um, of the long-term planning process there, the master planner. And so working with the people who may um, be successful winners of the RFP for that service to have a major public event with charrettes and drawings and people being able to contribute their visual idea of what the future of the village could be. Um, and then there's another kind of granular thing, which would be to do a bit of an evaluation um, in the shorter term to gather information about places that have public access. What is the actual land ownership pattern along the river? Um, so, you know, a lot of good ideas there. Uh, and I'm seeing some people say yes, <laughs> Ben, and other people uh, with lots of other comments. I don't think I want to go through all of the the comments right now, but let's let's see that comment thing as an ongoing place where you can put your idea that we'll digest it into this platform of plan that Larry will be uh, working with me to consider what some of the priorities that have come from this session might be. But I also want to turn. Um, and and is, is there any big thing that we've missed in terms of uh, something that could be done in the next year or the next six months that's, that's apart from the larger strategic planning process that we ought to have on the list? Um, oh, I'm sorry, should I raise my hand? Go ahead, sorry. Eric. Sorry. I see you. <laughs> um, I, I used to work in television a lot and everything's better with lighting. And it's just one of the things we haven't talked about. And yeah. like lighting, it's just one of the things we haven't thrown on. Lights make everything look better. And, we, and maybe maybe somewhere we should just throw lighting in there because as someone who used to work in television, 
it's all about lighting. Okay. <laughs> and cute lights along the street, or not only is there a safety thing, but there's a cute factor and, and you can, a town charm and character, depending on how all those street lamps or lamps on um, buildings or along a river walk. Yeah. Throw out lighting. In line with your, in line with your thing around having a pop-up event, you could- Well, then that's tiki torches and maybe solar lights. Or it's a pop-up thing. Everyone could bring their Christmas lights down to the river for the day and you have a pop-up river carnival, whatever. That's good too. <laughs> I like that. Everyone loves Christmas lights. You know, in Waterbury, they do a big event where they make, the children make in school, um, I think they're Japanese lanterns, paper mache lanterns. And they have a, they have a parade of them around their downtown. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful event. So I want to go to Mimi and Jane, and then I want to um, ask people to turn a corner a little bit and particularly in, engage our visiting team to think about some of the resource, some of the places that you could get help, technical assistance, or dollars to move some of these kinds of projects forward. Um, but first, I'll go to Mimi, Jane, and Esther um, in cogent fashion. Mimi. Um, as an immediate um, project. I think maybe everybody's talked about an event and we could have, um, because of the huge parking lot uh, that we have for the farmer's market, we could have an outdoor movie um, and we could have fire pits, which are easy, easily enough um, created with just uh, portable fire pits. Um, and um, or we could have a music concert, some some event that would bring focus to the Riverwalk. Yeah, like a kickoff. We're this is it. We're imagining the Riverwalk. You know, a big event. Okay, Jane. Yeah, I would just like to um, reinforce the idea of how important lighting is. Um, there was. Uh, I used to go to a, I spent my summers growing up in a very small island. And at one point we had to have a big movement to keep it dark, not dark in a gloomy way, but there was unnecessary lighting that took away from this beautiful quiet place. And I think educating people about being thoughtful about how they light and that can be part of the master plan where we, we, we offer concepts and ideas and tax abatements for d doing things that are in concert with our vision. So I think lighting is enormously huge. Um, Terrific, thank you. Um, Larry and then Esther, but really briefly, because we want to turn to that resource question. I was just going to say lighting is a part of uh, our zoning ordinance as well. Uh, so there are some uh, provisions for direct and indirect and making sure you're not shining your, your parking lot lights onto, you know, a residence and that sort of thing. But we can always add to that as well. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Esther, something to add? I'm sorry, are you talking to me? Yes. So I was just thinking about lighting as well. And if you stand on either end of uh, Route 11 on the main street and you look down, what you see is uh, telephone poles or electric power poles. And if you talk about lighting, you know, we have this thing around Christmas time to light up the town. Everybody get your lights out, make it beautiful. But there really weren't places like beautiful trees to hang lights on along the um, road on Route 11, but there were these telephone poles. And I don't know what uh, that means in terms of what's allowed to be put on those things or if they could be used because they're there and they're not going away to um, help the town look better. Terrific, thank you so much. So let's turn a corner with all this information and all these ideas on the table and think and uh, invite people on the visiting team to share too. Um, some of the potential resources that might be available um, that would help folks move this forward. Like what could your organizational help with technical assistance? Are there grant funds available for some of this work? Uh, what, does, what are you going to need in terms of um, resources to be successful? 
And it strikes me right off that the new Better Places initiative that is developing, a, the governor has promoted a $5 million budget um, and that will support projects for um, downtown revitalization in, in everything from pocket parks, benches to um, event spaces. So a lot of the different pieces that people have talked about could potentially either be, um, a, you know, compete for some of those funds individually or could be bundled together in short order. Um, and this is money that's going to potentially happen quickly and be a great opportunity to build some momentum. So I'm gonna list that one as a resource. Who has another resource that ought to be listed? Oh, go ahead, Gail. Um, we are in the process of getting our tax exemption status for our community fund for, Lant for Londonderry. So in terms of applying for grants, in terms of raising private money, we have a mechanism underway. That is so cool. So it's called the Community Fund for Londonderry, and it's yes. a nonprofit that could work with independent groups like this to be the vehicle to hold and manage money. Yes. Awesome. Boy, that's cute. Susan Collins is on. She has really been the spearhead for this effort. Awesome. Mimi. Yeah, um, I, I created a list for Project Londonderry of available funding and grants, um, uh, both state, federal, and, and local. Um, plus there's uh, banks and other funding. But um, I have a list of all sorts of um, monies that are available. I mean, Vermont is so eager to give money to projects. It's just applying for the grant with the specific purpose. Thanks so much. Um, anyone on the visiting team want to share perspectives on how their organization could connect? Um, Caitlin? Yeah, thanks, Paul. Um, so hi, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, um, I work with the Agency of Commerce and Community Development, uh, and specifically with the Downtown and Village Center Tax Credit Program. Um, that strikes me as a potential resource for um, the, the mill redevelopment project that you guys have been talking about this evening, as well as potentially other you know, buildings um, in, in the uh, village center area um, that are privately owned that might need um, some reinvestment. Um, but the other thing that I just wanted to say as a sort of a resource person uh, this evening is that there are lots of other potential state grant sources out there. Um, and because Londonderry is uh, what we call our designated village center, you do get priority consideration for a lot of these state grant sources. So um, I would really encourage um, any member of this group or the committee, however it you know, comes together, uh, once you've identified a particular project that you're wanting to move forward, please don't hesitate to reach out to to meet myself or any, I, you know, I can point you in the direction of some of my colleagues as well um, to help you match up the right grant source for your project um, so that you're really um, putting your energy into um, the right grant uh, and, uh, that will be a match for your project. Um, I also noticed in the chat, somebody had a question about um, grant writers uh, and wanted to just mention the READY program uh, with, which is through the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board, uh, where they actually do provide um, funds to help you help um, rural communities um, do some grant writing. So that might be a resource that you could tap into. That's so awesome and great of you, Caitlin, to be ready to take calls and be a resource referral agent for the community. And you work closely with Richard Amore, who also does that, right? I do. Great. Yeah, so I'll, I'll put my contact information in the chat. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm happy to, to sort of take those initial calls and queries about, we have this project in mind, how could we fund it and help you figure out who to go to. Awesome. We'll also be gathering all of this work and recommendations from all of our visiting team members from the whole process into a resource directory sort of 
based on your project ideas in the action plan that will be produced over the next month or so. Sarah from Brattleboro Credit Corporation. Hey everyone. Um, so a couple things come to mind. Um, so for those of you who aren't aware, um, Brattle Road Development Credit Corporation is your regional development corporation. So we're essentially sort of the sister organization to Wyndham Regional. They do the planning, we do the economic development. Um, so we have a lot of different ways we can plug in. I mean, we've worked really closely with um, the municipality over many years on many different things. Um, so Shane and, and Sharon know, you know, how to access us, access us in those ways. Um, a few things that do come to mind specific to um, the conversations we've had tonight, um, the program I run, the Southern Vermont Economy Project, um, we work to essentially build capacity within volunteer organizations. So something like Project Londonderry, Londonderry or even just anyone who is partaking in, in this um, process. And we're starting our um, project development series at the end of March. It's a four part series. So if you've never really been involved in a project from start to finish, you know, our project development series is just really great sort of foundational information um, on project stewardship, financial management, project management, and grant writing. Um, and so those four trainings happen throughout the year. Um, um, starting at the end of March. That might be something to consider for your individual self if you want a little more understanding and capacity about how projects come together and how projects are successful. Um, the two other things that came to mind, um, VOREC, the, um, this is not related to our organization, but um, the Vermont Outdoor Recreation Economic Collaborative I was on the um, task force for a few years and you probably have heard of their community grant program that recently when it's been, this is his third year, it went from a thousand to, or sorry, a hundred thousand to 200,000 to 5 million this year. Um, so that could be a really great pot of money. You know, I'm thinking either the river walk um, that everyone's been talking about. Um, someone mentioned bikes biking um, that definitely is sort of within the umbrella of what they do um, and what the types of things that they fund. <clears throat> and then the other thing is um, in Brattleboro um, on the Connecticut River, there was the Confluence Project, um, which had a lot of different pieces, parts to it, but it basically was trying to attract attention um, to the river. Um, and there was actually a really cool um speaking of like lights um they had people make lanterns or bring lanterns and then take them out on you know their canoes and kayaks at sunset and it was like it was just breathtaking and it was a really great way to interact with the river so um, i'll put links in the chat to th those three things that i mentioned and obviously you'll get my email and if there's anything else um feel free to reach out Again, people will probably call on you and the corporation for uh, technical assistance and connection. So thank you so much, Sarah. Um, other ideas on resources that could be available. Um, Susan, Susan Westa. Yeah, yes. Uh, the only funding that we have available through our organization um, is for brownfields cleanup or assessment work, and that might be useful And if you're trying to redevelop some sites like the mill site you were talking about. Um, otherwise, you know, as you know, we can help um, with grant applications. I've already talked to some of the folks at Project London Dairy about some of the other resources I'm familiar with, uh, such as the National Main Street Center and the Orton Family Foundation. But I just thought of another grant um, project that might be useful in uh, some of these early phases is an AARP placemaking grant. And those are small grants, but they could do, you know, some of these small, they could fund some of these small efforts that might help bring attention to what you're trying to do. Yeah, something like some of the crosswalks or right. heated road ways to have some safe, safe lanes and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, 
So some of this stuff may be big picture downtown redevelopment CDBG sort of stuff, and which is the community development block grants. And you know, when you get your master plan, it could potentially tee up building redevelopment or streetscape improvements, including varying power lines or or some of that infrastructure that Larry described. Um, and those projects could be much bigger and there would be opportunities with those that could connect to USDA, could connect to Northern Borders Regional Commission and other potential major funders. So we will be gathering information about those funds, which it sounds like you already may have some of this from, from what Mimi has done, but we'll add to that and, and systematize it and put phone numbers next to it. And VCRD will be ready to call or connect with you to support every and any grant um, that you are working on. You'll also have that action plan that oftentimes a community will tag on to the back of their grant document that says, oh, this is based on the work of 200 people coming together in Londonderry and setting direction. And we are all unified with a corner, you know, core ideas that we're moving forward that um, have gone through a deliberative process and have connected to regional resources. And now we need now we need the big bucks from from you folks. And so we'll be glad to be in your corner in in those stages of work as you move forward. Um, but uh, Susan, you still have your hand up. Did you have more to add? Oh, you're muted. <laughs> I didn't just take I didn't take my hand down. Sorry. OK. Um, are there other ideas on on either human resources or technical resources that you need? Um, clearly, this endeavor as a committee, you're not an official town committee. You're a free group of citizens that are planning and looking to move projects forward. Um, sometimes that may be advocating for action by the city. Sometimes it may be raising funds that um, that work with the community fund that Gail described um, and in, in any number of ways, you may be um, driving projects forward and actually, you know, building those park branches together. You know, put, putting in some sweat equity as a team. Um, so, so you are all re resources, and there may be other human resources within Londonderry that you'd want to connect to. So, glad of any other thoughts that ought to be on the list that we're building from tonight. You'll think of more as you go. Sarah, did you want to add something? No. Okay, um, it feels like we've got about three minutes. And Alyssa, I'm going to ask you if you can capture everything that's in the chat, and then I'll be doing some early drafting. And I'll I'd love to work with you on this a little bit, Alyssa, to make sure I've typed well, <laughs> and I also have caught everything you've heard. Um, does anyone have a point of inspiration that they'd like to share about the work going forward in this arena? before we go back to the larger group. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Larry. I, <clears throat> I didn't have my hand raised in the proper way, but uh, I just want to say it's great to have so many people involved. And it's, it's really heartwarming to see so many interested people in, in uh, kind of taking London Dairy back to some of its glory days, but in a, in a modern kind of way in terms of infrastructure and dealing with things that are, are current uh, with regard to things like uh, uh, global warming and flooding and that sort of thing. But uh, it's wonderful to see everyone. Anyone else? Um, it looks like it's time, perfect timing, Larry. It's time to leave the breakout room and rejoin the big picture. So um, we'll see you all there. Go ahead and click and leave and we'll see you in a sec. And if not, just stick around and you'll get there. Efficient, and the others are slow to respond because they haven't done their work effectively. Um, whoever said this was the cool, cool guy group 
was right, obviously. I think we should lord it over the others when they join. But we'll wait a moment for them. Hello. Hey, Jenna, we've been waiting for you for hours. It doesn't Zoom send us back at the same time. <laughs> We've been, no, we've been here for we 30 seconds. can't use that anymore. No, we've been here for 30 seconds. Is, and okay. we're, we're waiting for Ben, I guess, or is he here? Mm, we're back Nick. as well. Oh, you are? Yeah. Good. Well, great to see everyone. So I don't um, see Ben. Oh. Ben may be lost in virtual space. I, oh, there I you are. I see, I see him. Okay. So we're going to go really quickly to the next steps of this. And I don't know about the rest of you. I'll go first uh, to do a quick summation from our group. I found it really inspiring. There are 30 people in that team looking at the potential for the, um, the redevelopment of the villages and the revitalization of the villages and a lot of great ideas. Uh, there's a master plan coming. Everyone knows that that master plan is gonna have a deep, uh, deep way to dig into everything from where sidewalks might be, um, the potential for a major river walk the evaluation of different buildings in their place in the future community and economic development and housing, um, the, the potential for bike paths and walkways and uh, just the look and feel of the village and people wanna be engaged in that process. They wanna be part of visioning. It'd be nice to have some public visioning. But meanwhile, there's the opportunity to look at some nuts and bolts things now that could be done like developing a couple of crosswalks um, looking at potentially doing some pocket, um, like pocket park along the river with a bench or with some picnic tables to open up the riverside. The idea of doing a pop-up town green and a celebration or a pop-up downtown that uses spaces that are currently unused for everything from food to music to movie nights um, and really celebrating and building a sense of momentum around this redevelopment that could try some things out so that as the master plan is moving forward, the community gets more and more ready to, to think in a visionary way and then to act together. Um, so there's, there's a lot of um, granularity around that, everything from a kiosk for bicycles um, and bike racks and signage to, um, to doing an evaluation of where the public access points are now and what's available for the public to participate in now um, but I thought the, the big tone was to celebrate, to get engaged, and to, to do things that were visible in the shorter term as the group works with those doing master planning. So um, again, a huge group uh, there. Larry's going to be a great chair. Uh, we've got a lot of notes. There were probably uh, 50 or 60 contributions in the chat. We're going to boil all that down in with um, the notes that me and Alyssa have taken, and we're going to work with Larry to have a platform plan for him to bring into the next meeting of the group. So it's really exciting to uh, be part of that group. I'm gonna to go to Jenna and have you, you share what happened in your working group, Jenna. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Um, so our, our group was was smaller, but mighty and very smart. And, um, and I think will be an excellent asset um, to the future of housing in the community. Um, and, and have a kind of fairly logical plan, I think, for, for next steps. So, um, this group really uh, understood that a first step would be getting a sense for the lay of the land and what is, um, when you look at housing in the community, what is the kind of inventory available today and kind of surveying, surveying to get a sense of what is the need and what is available, but also maybe holding some kind of housing forum where they bring together realtors, community members, employers, and really get a, a, a picture of, um, of the landscape and what's needed today. And also like just getting at the crux of what is the real problem? Because um, we kind of thought of a whole menu of different ideas to address housing, but what are the, the ones that if you pull the right levers, they are gonna have the biggest impact on housing in the community. That's kind of step one. They also have a sense that um, there's a need to do some committee education, uh, maybe connecting with other communities, especially those with like small resort communities all over the country that are looking at housing options and kind of learning what have other towns done to address this issue, but also working with experts in the state and regionally to get a sense for what is that menu of options? What can a local housing committee do? 
And VHFA has a wonderful toolkit they shared that could be a really good starting point to learn some of those different options. And then a whole list of ideas of, of ways that could maybe fill some of those needs. Um, maybe partnering with the municipal planning grant process to learn, to get some more information about the needs and what's possible. Um, be learning more about different tax credits and incentive options or um, neighborhood designation zones to look at potential development in the future. Although the planning commission is doing a ton of work already around the zoning, which is great, but maybe needs to build some community support for, for those ideas and some community interest and buy-in. But also some other creative ideas around cooperative housing, tiny homes, um, uh, and maybe uh, renovations of some vacant spaces like an old hotel building. That's the piece of magic mountain there. So I think the general gist is like, do some digging to learn what's available and what's needed really do some kind of deep education and learn the kind of menu of options and then look at what's possible and connect with the resources we identified to think about next. Wow, terrific, Jenna. Thank you. Um, ben Doyle, how Great. did the community conversation, community center conversation go? I thought, you know, it was fascinating. Uh, it was, a, I thought, a very good conversation, a great group of people who brought actually uh, really um, unique perspectives and valued perspectives. Uh, a lot of good work happening. And uh, I think what my big takeaway was lots of good work happening, additional coordination needed, uh, right? And so, uh, but the group did a great job of uh, identifying a bunch of action steps to take. Uh, and we got kind of a prioritized list. So the first thing that they've suggested to do is to consult with other towns that have done uh, similar kinds of community center projects. You know, and that could be the whole continuum from the Broadbrook Community Development Center in Guilford to the massive $17 million community center in, Col in, uh, in uh, which town is it in, Max? Yeah, maybe it's Colebrook uh, in New Hampshire. This incredible, incredible one paid for through philanthropic dollars. So it's really about working with other towns to see that have engaged in this process successfully and um, to, to learn from them. And then the next step was the idea of uh, including uh, potentially other regional partners in the conversation, you know, and thinking about issues of scale uh, and what neighboring communities in mountain towns might be facing is there a way for collaborating either with programming or with space? Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, and similar to that, uh, the next step would be create a kind of asset map, right? Asset mapping exercise that says, look, these are all the physical spaces that people gather here in town, right? These are the ones that are accessible, that are you know heated in the winter time, all those kinds of things. And then you take a look at your programming assets, right? What are all the great things that are happening with the collaborative and child uh, early childhood work uh, or what's happening at the library or the town hall in terms of programming. And when you start to line up the programming needs with the building needs, you'll identify the opportunities and the gaps. And that will kind of help inform, again, the committee's thinking about uh, what, what a community center might look like. And then the next step, which is really everybody I think feels is the critical one, um, but there might be, need to be some prep work done beforehand, is to really engage the community uh, to really do a, a variety of different kind of survey instruments of the community to engage the community saying, look, here's some research that we've done on what we have, what we could, you know, what other communities have done. What do you see as a community center and really have the community reflect on that in a deep kind of way. And then the final step is trying to take all of that information and articulate you know, uh, an idea about a proposal, if you will, of what a community center could look like and you know, maybe that's a feasibility study, maybe it's a vision statement, but really you're trying to identify the opportunity here for the community. And I, I feel like this group and this community can do it. They're engaged and they have great assets. And I know there are a lot of people who are anxious to help. That's exciting, really exciting. So um, we'll, we'll, we're gonna come into conclusion in a minute, but I want to give Jenna an opportunity to share um, some of the next steps that would happen in this process in terms of what you'll see next and uh, where it goes. Great. Um, well, thanks everyone. Let me just, before I get in next practical steps, let me just thank you all for participating, for sticking with us through this process, for being our first virtual community visit. Um, just has been a real pleasure working with all of you. And even though we haven't been able to be there, um, I do feel like I've gotten to know Londonderry and I'm really excited to come and visit as soon as we can and, and work with these committees in the long term. But uh, what comes next from here is uh, we are going to take the action plans we developed tonight, 
make sure that um, our chairs, that Larry and Elizabeth and Patty get a hold of these action plans and the lists of committee members who've signed up to be involved and to help out. So those chairs will actually be in touch with you in terms of setting up next meetings for your task force. But we will continue to be in touch with the full list. We'll pull all of this together, all the initial brainstorming notes, all the ideas, the contact info for all these resource team and visiting team members that attended throughout these sessions. And we'll get that back to you in a, um, we'll bring down cases of final action reports that will capture this whole process and share with you. I'll let you know where you can go to, to find those and we'll share them virtually as well. Um, and then from there, we're gonna continue to be a resource to all of you. Um, we're gonna continue to help you connect to, to folks and, and funding and support that you might need to get these things done. Call on us anytime um, as you move forward. Um, we, uh, we, always, we fall in love with every town that we work with and we wanna see you succeed and we're excited to work with London Dairy long-term. So um, thanks so much and we'll be in touch soon. Paul? Thanks, Janet. So we wanna thank the select board um, to, for inviting this process in, you know, it, it takes courage when you're a local municipal board to say, yeah, we want to engage the whole community in thinking it, our way forward and um, being open and listening and participating. And so thank you. It, it really matters. And then Project Londonderry, which has done some great work teeing up um, and, and moving forward with some of this work in advance of this. And um, potentially weaving together um, with all this work as, as time goes forward. Um, I also really want to appreciate the local chairs who've stepped up to um, take leadership of projects. It's, it's a lot. Um, we will have a session with them to talk about uh, designating and passing work on to everyone and corralling and managing groups so that everyone's active and leading um, and no one person has to carry the whole load of the work. Uh, and then VCRD staff, Jenna, Nick, Alyssa, Margaret. I mean, we are all working really hard right now. Um, through the whole COVID period, it's been super intense. Um, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the work that you guys do. Our visiting team members, you know, our old friends uh, like John Muse, our, our new friends, um, and and the, the way that you put yourselves on the line for these com communities in service and respect and towards the future of Vermont is really powerful. Um, you know, we, we get to see the insides of a lot of towns and we see the challenges that towns have. We, we hear some of the dirty laundry that a town has. We see towns where um, they, where towns question themselves and they they feel blocked all the time and they're then and, and where some people are tired and and where people want to engage new people but they don't know how to start and you know we see all the challenges we also see the all the assets of the beauty of these places and the tremendous capacity of human um, beings within these places and one thing that we see in a place like Londonderry, you, you may have your challenges, you may have had long-term challenges of one form or another, even the, the, the ecological challenges of, of weather and the, the river. But when you, if you threw your, your problems in a hat with other towns in Vermont and you reached into the hat for a list of problems, you'd be really lucky to grab your own. And you, and you did the same thing with the assets of the beauty and the human capacity of your community you, you'd be pulling out something that would be an incredible gift because the people in Londonderry have a tremendous capacity to move this kind of work forward. And everything we've talked about tonight in each of the groups, we've seen done. So for us, we think of the human capacity, the sense of direction that you have, the connections that you have, and how that adds up to power. And in democracy, power isn't about being above someone. It's about moving the community forward together. And there's no greater honor uh, than to be involved in that conversation with you all, especially right now when power has been so fractionalized and divided uh, in our country and, and even in our own communities sometimes. Um, you're, you guys are carrying a torch for the world <laughs> and you're also going to do great things that are gonna build momentum and improve the health, happiness, and well-being of people in your own community now and for the next generation. So, you know, Godspeed, <laughs> and, 
And I know I get a little grandiose, but it's because we, we see it and we see it in action and we see it in the faces of people who put themselves on the line. So thanks to each of you for being uh, the, the, true, the true Vermonters who, who do the work and, um, and, and uh, onward. That's all I have to say, Jenna. Is there anything else we're missing? I think you covered it, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, everybody. Um, but we'll we have to thank to... you. <laughs> thank you, all of you, for such a wonderful process. You've really made it so, so wonderful in terms of organizing and putting us on the, on the right track and pulling everything together. It, we just can't thank you enough. Well, we're excited to watch the next stage. So thank you all. And thanks That's for your readers. Thanks everyone. Have a great Bye -bye. night. Thank you.